This is not a story from the 1950s or 60s. Over the last several years, Gerard Robinson was repeatedly denied admission to University High School of Science and Engineering in Hartford, Connecticut. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Magnet schools typically hold lotteries because there are more interested kids in the school district than the school can accommodate. Gerard Robinson won first place in his lottery, but still wasn't allowed to attend University High, even when there was room. Gerard became so discouraged that he eventually dropped out of school entirely. As you can imagine, all this has resulted in court action. Oliver Dunford is one of the attorneys representing Gerard's mom, who wants to make sure her other four children do not suffer the same fate as their brother. Oliver, thanks for being with us today. We're glad your organization, Pacific Legal Foundation, has picked up this case. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. We appreciate you talking about it. Can you help us understand why Gerard's mom, LaShawn Robinson, wanted to get him out of his neighborhood school? LaShawn herself has said that she didn't take school very seriously when she was there, and she said she wanted a better life for her kids, and including a better education, and she didn't think Gerard was getting it. He was not doing well, wasn't engaged, was bullied a little bit, and so he wanted to get out, and LaShawn tried everything she could to get him out of the neighborhood schools and into one of the magnet schools. You know, ever since the civil rights era of the 60s, segregation has been a hot educational issue. How can we link the rise of magnet schools with efforts at desegregation? Yeah, this case in Connecticut goes back to a 1996 decision from the Connecticut Supreme Court. That case was brought by some families from Connecticut, and they argued, and the Supreme Court of Connecticut agreed, that the Hartford schools were too segregated. Now, Hartford itself, the city and its schools, never had a history of legal segregation like some cities in the South. Nonetheless, the Connecticut Supreme Court said that the city had to do things to rectify this problem. And one of the things that came out of that decision was the creation of these magnet schools, which allows schools both inside the city of Hartford and in the surrounding suburbs to draw students from all areas. But there's one catch, that each magnet school can have no more than 75% of its students black or Hispanic. Each of these magnet schools has to have at least 25% white or Asian students. Oliver, how can kids like Gerard be hurt by a solution that seems so beneficial? The really pernicious part about this aside from the just simply drawing these lines by race, is that the funding is tied to the percentages. So any school that cannot keep at least 25% of its students white or Asian will lose funding. And so what happens is when they run this lottery, which is supposedly race neutral, once a school gets to the 75% number of black and Hispanic students, they won't take any more black and Hispanic students because by doing so, it will upset that 25-75 ratio. And so what we have is schools that are leaving seats empty rather than allowing black and Hispanic kids fill them. Well, I never would have suspected the funding angle of that, but I, I guess it only makes sense. For the average person like me, who has never attended law school, excluding students by race seems like a big injustice. What's the legal rationale Pacific Legal Foundation is using to fight this case? This is based on the federal constitution, specifically the 14th Amendment, that each state cannot deny any of its citizens equal protection. And so our argument is that the city of Hartford and the state law that requires it, and through the lottery system, that they are denying our clients and their children their equal right to win the lottery spot and to get a spot in these schools solely because of their race. The defendants say that they are not doing it solely by race, that they have a neutral system in place to make these decisions. But at the end of the day, the schools have to keep at least 25% of its seats for white and Asian students. Ultimately, the decision on how these schools are filled with students is based on the student's race. Well, and we think of uh, desegregation as a good thing because we know some of the history of it, but here's a case where it's really hurting the people it's trying to help. For everybody listening right now, you need to know this case was heard in federal court just a few days ago. Oliver, what can we expect next? 
on Tuesday, the court heard arguments on the defendants. It's called a motion for judgment on the pleadings. That means is that they argue that we have not even alleged enough in our complaint to move forward. We think we've done that. We think we've alleged in our complaint, we've said, here's what's wrong with the law, here's why it's illegal. We think that the judge will deny defendants' motions. And what that means is that we will get to go to discovery, meaning we can start getting documents from the state, we can start deposing people in the education department and the Harvard schools and find out exactly what they're doing and whether, as they say, they're uh, acting in a race-neutral manner. Is there anything else you'd like to share about this case? Well, sure. I'd like to tell you that we have wonderful clients. They are taking a lot of heat in Connecticut. It's been a big story for a long time in Connecticut. Uh, Our clients are very brave. They are out there fighting for their kids, and it's a privilege for Pacific Legal Foundation to represent them. Oliver, I really want to thank you for visiting with us today. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Oliver Dunford is an attorney with Pacific Legal Foundation. You can check out its website at pacificlegal.com. Org. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.